So now, I think one of the most important sessions of the day is about video and photography, because pretty much that's what travel is about. We get so much travel with our pictures of us, right? So we've got like three kick-ass women up here to tell you how to get the best pictures and photography from any truck that you take. So without that, let's uh, start the capturing and promoting your travel through photography and video. We've got three experts. I'm going to kind of read your bio. <laughs> Come up here. First, we have uh, Monica Ortega. We have Joanna Iskella Blackness. Yes, I got that one. Okay. <laughs> and then Sarah, then, is it Dandashi? Dandashi. You know what? I feel for the people who do because my real name, I'll stop KJ, is Kawana Rashawn Matthews. And when I first got into television, everyone was like, so what other names do you go by? <laughs> it was like, nobody wants to talk to me out there. feel like that. No, I get it. So I feel <laughs> for people like that. So let me tell you a little bit about um, Monica. Uh, Monica Ortega is a creator, host, and producer of the online travel series, Monica Goes. That's all about showing people that you don't have to be an expert or an adrenaline junkie to go on adventures, and facing your fears and pushing your comfort zone is well worth the risk. So let's welcome Monica. <laughs> And then we have Sarah. Um, Sarah is an award-winning concierge uh, and host of the online travel series, Ask a Concierge. Uh, with over 15 years of hospitality experience, she is considered a verified source of travel information as both local expert um, and internationally. Um, she's got connections all around the world. Uh, people seek her out for her travel tips, for advice, and knowledge of trends from the front lines of travel. So let's welcome Sarah. <laughs> and last but not least, <laughs> we have Joanna. Uh, Joanna is a travel blogger and an actress based here in LA uh, who loves roaming around uh, new destinations, connecting with locals and learning about immersing herself in different uh, cultures as much as possible. She has been to over 40 countries, and that's a big assault for this. Um, and pretty much almost every place is on her bucket list. So the other 40 she hasn't been to are 100, so she's going to make sure she makes that happen, especially out of Manchester State. <laughs> so let's welcome your back. So I know I talked about the visual right off the bat, um, and there's so much on Instagram that I think if you're not a professional photographer, it is so intimidating. Everybody's got their presets and photo shops and carefully staged photos. And it can be daunting to um, an amateur such as myself. Is like, how do you get these great pictures and, and videos? And I'm wondering, can anybody achieve that? You know, ever? Anybody do I say? Yeah, I think absolutely. Uh, I will say too, like the big thing right now is authenticity. Yeah. So. You know, don't worry so much about making all of your photos so perfect because it gets a little bit overdone. People really relate to the captions and the stories behind them as well. Um, so that's a big part of it. But when I started, I knew nothing. I did everything about photos, anything about videos. And like that. I did everything on my iPhone, and it was just trial and error. And <coughs> yeah, so I think absolutely anybody can do it. It's just a giant thing. Authenticity is key, you're saying. Absolutely, yeah. Again, yeah, no, I definitely, I mean, Okay, my whole thing is, is like, whenever you're trying to learn a platform, if that's something that you really want to make a presence on, and like, I, like be on it, be on that platform. Um, whether I mean, obviously, it's like the top platform to be on now, but whatever it is, and just like see what's working for other people, and then try and emulate it. And quite frankly, as far as um, when it comes to equipment, iPhones like take amazing photos, and so. You know, just to practice, um, practice creating stuff. And it's very key what you said actually about authenticity. I found, um, I do have a bit of a, a film background, so I do understand cameras and editing and all of that. And sometimes seek to maybe have something a bit polished because I, I understand how to like create a polished video. I'm actually working with a really big brand right now. They're like, awesome, it just was a commercial. We want more personality. So they kind of want the things that aren't totally, and I'll find something that, I might do a video of me dancing in front of a wall, and people are like, this is amazing, and I'm like, this is dancing. <laughs> <laughs> like, not even my best friend. <laughs> <movie. laughs> like, really? But they're like, this is like so authentic, um, where I might do something that's beautiful, drone footage, and this, and I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, 
be too polished. And so just start creating content and figure it out. Also, I'm sorry I'm talking a lot, um, but also I get really excited about this, but you know, when, let's just say you're just using your iPhone, you can still play on Lightroom and other things to really modify your photos. Um, I, I have photos that I'll take on my iPhone that get even sometimes more engagement than something I take on like a really nice camera. So just really all how you can play with it and uh, keep it authentic. Yeah, I'm gonna 100% agree with that because when I started out, I did mostly photography and I, I hated a, putting myself in my photos, it just felt like extra work to do and I wanted to take the places I was seeing. I didn't want to put myself in it. But I realized at some point that if people want to see like the most wow travel photos out there, they're going to go to the National Geographic's page. Like they want to see you and they want to connect to your experience. So I get people commenting, you know, great things in my photos, but I get a lot of people commenting that like, I follow you because I love your captions, I love the stories you tell under your photos about the places you're at. Um, I love your IG stories and I can see what it's actually like to be traveling in these places and not just like the final, you know, polished Instagram photo and I have high engagement on my IG stories for that reason. So, you know, focus on getting a nice photo obviously and try to show, uh, show off the place you're at, but be yourself, put yourself in your photos and put your actual thoughts and feelings along the way into your Instagram, and it makes such a big difference. And you know, like Sarah said, with technology now, you don't need to be investing like thousands of dollars in the top of the line cameras to start off your Instagram. Like it's not necessary. The most, like one of the last iPhones in the last few years will probably be taking good enough photos for you to have a great Instagram account. So, yeah. And, and just remind everybody, how long have you guys been shooting still photos and, and videos as well? Um, start with you. Uh, so I come from a hosting background. I did live hosting for events and things like that. I have never used a camera, shot video, anything like that. And my hosting teacher told me to start my dream show as a way to get auditions. So I literally just started hiking with my iPhone and filming myself. Uh, and that was four years ago. And to this day, I still use my iPhone. I do have a camera, but it's that little one there. I don't have like a huge setup yet. Um, so I use two action cameras, my little camera, and a drone, and that's pretty much it. Uh, but the photography and the video has been a giant learning curve. I think that there's so much stuff out there. And at first, I was really afraid to feel like I was copying people by looking at something and going, okay, how do I make that work? But that's the way I learned. Some people are super artistic. My brother's a photographer. He can look at something and know how to set it up. I have to look at a photo and go, I need to recreate that in my own way. And then my caption makes it my own and things like that too. And my videos make it my own. But um, yeah, so very new to photo and video in the tech world and all of that. I actually did not know that story. Oh, really? Really? <laughs> that's <funny. laughs> no, I'm really? I never thought I'm doing this. <laughs> But I, because it reminds me, I wanted to actually kind of just share my story based off of that, which is similar yeah. in that I actually was taking a writing course. We were starting to do, I was writing a vlog, or, I'm sorry, I was writing a, a comedy piece with this other girl, and she was like, let's do this writing course. So we're in this writing course, and the instructor was like, everybody has to do a vlog. And like, one girl was in the stores, and one girl was getting married, and I'm like, what the hell am I going to talk about? Like, I don't know. Like, I'm a concierge, but like, um, I guess I'll talk about things to do in LA. Who's gonna want to <laughs> learn about that? And I did like, by the way, the videos are still out there and they're extremely embarrassing because at the start, I look like a stewardess. It's like oh, ridiculous. But I started to feel like this is really great. And I'm like, you guys live in LA. Why do you care about like learning about Hollywood Boulevard or this? And they're like, no, no, we have friends that come to town or sometimes we're trying to figure out what yeah. like we want to do. And I'm like, oh. I might be off to something. And so, I, again, my story is very like, kind of casually doing it um, as far as, I, my, my whole passion was busy video. I have a background in film and TV as well as hospitality, and this was kind of the merging of the two worlds. And, you know, I started very basic, and then I just would like, oh, I have a new toy. I get, I get a GoPro, and I can do this. And then it's like, oh, I can, well, I get to a drone, et cetera. So it, it becomes a natural evolution, and, Quite frankly, if it's your passion, you're gonna to want to do it all the time. And it's like I spent so much of my free time learning stuff. And I even noticed that, um, like my, I, I would change everything. So instead of like spending 
like X amount of time like buying clothing or things like that. Or I was like, yeah, I could go buy a decent camera with that amount of money. And so all of my priorities kind of changed and I just committed myself to to growing and learning a little bit. Can I just add one really quick little yeah. thing? I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Friendly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but on that note, too, like for me, I love everything about this business. I love learning about it and marketing, and I can stay up and learn about editing and all these things. The tech stuff, it doesn't come natural to me. I don't want to learn about S DOS. I mean, I know I, know I should, and I try, and I really, I really do, and I sit down and try to learn those things. It doesn't come natural to me. And in that case, I think in any business, the stuff that doesn't come natural and is a struggle, delegate. So I started having friends that were holding my camera until I found one that loved it, and she is now my producer, and she finally put in geeks out on it and learns all of that stuff, and you know knows the angles. So get to that point where you can find somebody that really does love this stuff, if that's not your forte. And yeah, and I actually have somebody that helps me shoot, and mainly, I, I do shoot as well too, but it helps me edit. That's what I find is that I'll get home and I'm so on the go and I'm juggling so many things. I just I don't have the time to sit down and edit an amazing video. So I've been lucky that um, I have a couple of people that I work with and they help bring capture that moment, like bring it to um, to fruition. And um, going back to like learning photography, I mean I started about four years ago. I do mainly photography. Like I just started videography, so. I'm looking forward to recording from these ladies on that as well. I'll take notes. Um, but yeah, I started about four years ago, and honestly, the, most of the people I've met doing tile photography are self-taught. They're not professionally trained, so you know you can definitely learn that way. There's seminars everywhere. There's online courses everywhere. But the number one thing, honestly, to do, like I like photography to playing an instrument because you can learn all the theory in the world, but if you're not out there doing it and failing and trying and getting it wrong, it's just not going to improve. Like, I looked at my photos when I started, and <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure, like, right now, because it's an ongoing learning process, in two years, I'll look at my photos today and probably cringe a little, and that's just, it is what it is. But it just, keep learning, keep improving, keep improving different techniques. Like, there's one thing, um, there's a certain way to do, you know, court photography, there's a certain way to do street photography, landscape photography, and the more you enrich in my opinion, the more you enrich your knowledge in all of that, the bigger story you can tell about your travel. So you can truly capture all these different perspectives of a place. Yeah. I, I agree with you on that. I, um, I've been traveling for a decade, but it's so funny. I always have the hardest time deciding what I should do when I shoot pictures in the daytime versus the nighttime versus cloudy <laughs> versus sunny. It's just so difficult. I'm like, I only have professionals. So, so I got professionals now. So for you guys, are there, are there any tips you could offer people in terms of um, when they're out somewhere abroad, you know, truly, uh, tree, uh, shooting a landscape uh, in the day side versus shooting something at night? Any, any like one or two tips that they should always remember when shooting at night or always remember when shooting at night? Yeah. Well, I do, uh, so I do outdoor adventure. So for the most part, it is during the day, okay. and it makes it kind of unique because they're just beautiful places. Uh, but I'm a big fan of like, like gathering stuff, like trying to figure out different ways to do things. And so we did a hike where we left before the sun rose, and I had my like one friend with her iPhone flashlight on my face while I talked. I had people wear headlamps to light stuff up. So I know that that's not the technical way. There's <laughs> 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 some other ways to do things. Now I'll let you talk technical. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say for school photography especially, and not to sound too new agey, but guys, everything is light. Like this, yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just it's true. photography is essentially you're just manipulating light in a great way. And a lot of times you see the difference between like a good photo and a wow photo is the time of day was taken, the way the light's been used, and it's the number one thing to get a handle on as a photographer, which is why people talk about like golden hour and blue hour, which is respectively like, you know, hours before and after sunrise, before and after sunset. Um, and you know, at night, I mean, you're still dealing with light, basically, because a lot of the great night shots, it's long exposures in cities, it's stars and moon, and it's still, it's, it's really just capturing light. It's the number one thing to keep in mind. And that's not to say, you know, you can take photos in the middle of the day and do whatever, but it's just always having in mind like where the sun's coming from, what you're working with, how the shadows and everything are creating depth, because you want to have that 3D kind of 
quality in your still image, and that's what's really important on the practical side. Yeah, and I think chiming in on to that, it's also about like knowing your voice. Mm -hmm. um, what I kind of found at a certain point, I was like, I don't. Like, and then the images that you're choosing that kind of reflect you or your brand, uh, I don't necessarily do as many night photos. That's not necessarily my brand. My brand is like bright, and it's like stuff that's during the day, whether it's active or pretty or whatever it is. So, I mean, obviously, every so often I do include more night photos or night videos, depending on what it is. But um, for me, I definitely focus more on the day because light is everything and natural light is everything. Um, Especially, and video is also really different, especially if you're um, supposed to be, like if you're in the, in the video as well too, really understanding how to light yourself, um, what you like and also what kind of works. Um, little tips for that, especially if you're just getting started. Um, let's say you want to shoot like a video of yourself talking about whatever you're going to be talking about is to use natural light from outside and basically put your camera up like so that it's in front of a window and use that as soft light from, um, from outside. So not with the sun coming directly in on your face because then it'll be like really, really bright, but it, when you've got that nice light, like, it just makes your skin pop, your eye color pop, everything. And um, I will say that once you get used to seeing yourself like that, you'll be like, no fake light ever, ever. So um, but it does really look good for everybody. So. I'm definitely a proponent of using natural light, but obviously there are times that you have to make it so you make it. <laughs> are there particular angles that the light to for the light to come from? That's like are you talking about on your face or for portrait or, or for like just for flattery? Definitely so not. <laughs> Then you get a little bit of the shadow, and it's okay, just not as flattering. And then also, you can just practice. Like, get out your phone and like use your like Insta stories and be like, okay, where? Oh, okay. Insta no, stories are the best training tools. One hundred percent. In fact, I wanted to talk about that earlier. Is that that's another great way? Like, um, so often we're focused on putting stuff in our feed, like let's say for Instagram, and it's polished and it has. You know, you know, it has a certain look to it because you want it to look great, and you've got personality certainly in your um, in your caption. But Insta stories, I, I think that was like a game changer for me. All of a sudden, people were like, "Whoa, you're really quirky and weird." <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but it just all of a sudden added like a whole different element. Now they're like, "Oh, cool, we can see like who you are," as opposed to just like pretty photos. And pretty photos might get a like. The caption might engage people, but then seeing the Insta stories, then they like fall in love with you, and they want to follow your journey on whatever that may be, whether it's eating a burrito or dancing in front of a wall. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to know um, how much do you put into um, staging a photo, or just kind of spontaneity goes for us? I know a lot of people say before they go to a destination. They already know exactly where they want to take their pictures, the pose they want to take their pictures in, if it's going to be day, if it's going to be night. Yeah, but then I know other people who say, I want to feel it. I want to get there. I want to see what the weather's like. I want to see what's there. And then I'll decide my pictures once I get there. What do you guys say about that? I mean, different things work for different people. So I'm not going to say, like, everyone has their method that works organically for them the best. Um, for me, I, I do like doing some research and kind of seeing maybe, I don't know, a good spot where you can get a view of the city, something like that, because I'm not local to the place I'm going, I won't know these off the bat. But for me, I really like just, my first thing in the city, I usually won't take a camera with me, I will leave it at home, and I'll walk around as much as possible, yeah, and just 
to see things and discover things like this street looks interesting let me go down this way and what's this and talk to local people my number one thing talk to local people they know better than you all the time um and then you know i'll take my camera back the next days because i think the thing is there are so many shots on instagram like i know that everyone's seen like a million of specific shots in like iceland and body like it's the same shot it's different interpretations, it's different everything, but it's more interesting, I think, to go to a place and take a shot that's maybe not flooded Instagram already, that's not all over the place, so you can show something different, so you can show a different corner of a place. I mean, even in LA, you know, like we live here and I see, you know, the shots like Venice Beach and the Hollywood sign, the downtown skyline, and they're great, and I take those shots too, you know? But it's nice to like, I know, go to a park and take something there that's maybe not all over Instagram. It's not people's vision of LA, but it's a part of the city. So that's my two cents on that. What do you want to say? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I love that. I, yeah. I do, but I also feel like you're very artistic and you're that photographer that I wish I could be. And just have to have <laughs> I'm not. So for me, I do um, look on Instagram and have an idea, especially because I work with a lot of tourism. So I know the destination I'm going to. So I would look on the location on Instagram, find the different photos, and then I'm worried about colors. So I, I will pick out what outfit I'm gonna wear that's gonna make that background look or make me look a certain way. Um, and then when I write out my shot list for my video, I know I'm doing a stand up at this mountain location. And I know that I'm doing an interview at this location. And so I do kind of structure it out a bit. One thing I'm definitely working on is letting the camera go and experiencing those places a bit more. And nine times out of 10, the best photos are not the ones I thought they would be. And they are not the stage ones. They're usually something ridiculous that I take on the side. Yes. Um, or my friend who is my producer, like she, she's way better at that stuff. So she'll just capture like the silly moments. And those tend to do the best anyway. So maybe don't listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a good combination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's totally a combination yeah. for me. And I found that um, I, I don't know, it's weird. I don't know if it's because of being a concierge for so long, but I spent my whole life planning stuff for other people that sometimes I'm like, I don't want to plan, I just want to go. Um, yeah, certainly I'll have like an idea of a place so that I kind of like know where I'm going, but I definitely don't over plan my shots by any means. Um, and maybe I have some videographers that I work with that are like, can we just get you to sit down so we can talk about this some more? And I'm like, I just want to experience it. <laughs> general outline so I can know. But like what I I found and even for me is that if I go home and, and I'm I'm actually talking about this because I'm like working on this on a project right now and it's like I'm talking I'm doing talking about a place in a voiceover and it's okay but then it's like when we have like footage of me talking about something there it's so much better and different. And so what I've really found is that for me and again it takes practice because there were definitely like times where I'm like, okay, I have to write out everything I'm saying. Um, but then I kind of got to a point that just, again, with practice, and honestly, I even think like practicing with Insta stories, because then you have to learn how to be succinct. Yeah. You gotta do it in 15 seconds. Um, you, it's just you, so you can just sit there and do 30 takes if you need to. For 15 seconds, I'll get a bitch to speak. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. not what it yeah. is. Yeah. Totally. So it's like, you just keep playing with that, and I mean, you don't have to share it if you don't like it. Um, yeah. But that just really got me a lot better as far as just kind of like winging it. You know, they've also taken some wear and tear. It still works, so that's why I also have two. Um, I do have two GoPros, a Hero 5, and I just got a Hero 7. So cool because it has an in-body stabilization. That's also actually what I love about that Canon G7X. It does have in-body stabilization, so I can go somewhere and like walk with it like this, and it'll just have this smooth like tan. Um, so I'm a huge fan of being aware of that. Um, and then some things I just use my iPhone for. Like I use my iPhone for hyperlapse, um, for different things that I can actually like add to my videos. So I, quite, I always make fun of myself sometimes on shoots because I'm like that girl with three like cameras. I've got like the, the Canon G7S, I've got like the GoPro, I have my iPhone. And they're like, what are you doing? I'm like capturing content. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm fun to travel with. Um, <laughs> but it's like, but each one is a 
so different, and it, and it just misses <laughs> so true. Um, and then I do have a drone, which I will be honest, I still need to learn how to fly. I bought it, and I'm like, who's flying this for me? Because I would be in the shot. And it's like, so I am working on, on learning to fly that. Um, so, but yeah, so that's all like the equipment that I have. I do want to get like the big baby that you have, but I love even I was, I'm a little intimidated by it. One of these days. <laughs> I'm on the low tech side. <laughs> uh, again, I shot with my phone for the first three years that I did my show, and this is like doing an episode every single week for the first three years, and it shot 4K. Uh, but now I have my Canon G7X, and I like it because it's little, I do a lot of fighting, like I said. I have a Sony action camera, which is my favorite action camera, but they stopped making them, so I also have a GoPro. Uh, but it's actually great to have the two of them, so you get two different angles. And then I have my drone, which I can kind of fly, but I tend to crash every time I do it. Nope. No. <laughs> <laughs> so once you take these marvelous award-winning shots, <laughs> and you decide you're going to post it on Instagram, what kind of photo apps, Photoshop, presets are you using? Because a lot of what we're seeing on Instagram is very filtered. So we know there's a shot that they took, and there's a shot we're seeing. There's a lot that goes yeah, in between here. A lot. Of <laughs> I'm sure you, there have been people that have put their pictures kind of raw on Instagram stories just to show you what it looks like before and after, and it's like amazing. Um, so I'd love to know what kind of photo app tools you guys are using. Um, I use, on my computer, I use Lightroom for almost everything. Photoshop, like, very rarely, maybe for Louis, I can count two hands the amount of photos that use Photoshop for. Lightroom will cover most travel photos, and then I switch on to Instagram. In Instagram, I do, I don't do a lot of filtering, but I do think my feed should look generally cohesive, so I tend to use like the same filter gets up to me. Really? I was told that people do all their filtering outside of Instagram. But you're saying you, you use I'm saying I do a little bit inside Instagram because uh, I wanted to look. You wanted to all have the same. I wanted to look a bit So I'll do like a little pizza, a little fade, and it kind of it evens out a little the it's colors cool. that are going yeah. on in the hues. Um, yeah, and I mean I know you can also you can use these on your phone. Like there's Lightroom for phone. There's Snapseed, which a lot of people like to use on my phone. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what I do. I, I use Lightroom. Um, I'm still learning it, uh, you know. But I mean, I do use Lightroom for sure. Uh, a kind of a great way to, to start getting into it is like buy somebody's presets and kind of see like what works for them, and then you're like, oh, okay, cool. So then I use this, and I use this tool, and this. You so it's like you just take and you play with it, and then again, just like working with other like creators, um, and you just sit down with them. Again, I even asked Layla what time and I was like, yeah, what do you do? And I just sat there. <laughs> um, but it's cool because it's like every time you sit down with somebody that knows that you can like learn a little bit more. Um, so I do that. I might do slight, I don't necessarily use Photoshop, but oddly enough, this is kind of like a weird thing, I will use Facetune, but not for my face. <laughs> no, but like, because it, it just, for me, I, I just, I want to do stuff like on my phone and just keep it really yeah. simple. Um, plus, half the time I'm like on the go, so like you know, bust out my laptop isn't always appropriate. Um, but I'll use Facetune, and it'll be anything from like I had a photo of myself um, in a dress, travel order, and um, and it was cute. But it just I wanted to zoom it out my legs just because of the um, just the way the lighting was. So it's like I could just use a little filter on that to just go poop. You know, just kind of like some stuff just a little bit. So, or something is like a little bit punched, just something, whatever, my zipper's down my room. Um, whatever it is, you fix it, you know. Um, and I, that to me is a very easy, um, not intense or overwhelming tool to use. Um, and you just play with it and just make sure it's natural. I use nature. No. <laughs> <laughs>
you can give everybody here like three takeaway, takeaways, um, three things that they can put into action today to really spruce up the <coughs> and their videos. Um, me personally, the thing I always tell people is don't let the tech stuff intimidate you because I know, especially for somebody like me that's not really in that world and doesn't know as much about it, I felt like for a long time that held me back. So I tell people, don't don't let the big cameras and the amazing videos put you off because a lot of times people just want to relate to you, and that doesn't come down to what you know what tech stuff you're using. It really just comes down to the story you're telling. This is my second thing: tell a story. Um, you know, know your why. Why why are you making this video? Why are you making this photo? What's going on behind it? That's what people really connect to. Um, and then. I guess for the technical stuff, I would say for me, sound and stabilization are the two biggest reasons I like or don't like a video. And uh, so really hone in on that, find ways to cut out the wind or if it's too windy, put a voiceover over something, find the stable shots as opposed to the jerky ones. You know, if you're doing a hike with a GoPro that's bouncing around, you may be fine with it. <laughs> so, you know, sound and stabilization tend to be the two reasons that people will switch off to the video. That's issue. Um, I say uh, number one thing is be consistent. So not only um, because consistency, that's just how you're going to get better. So like whether you're consistently kind of just like working on improving, consistently posting. The, uh, to me, it's like so often I'm hearing about people are like, oh, I don't, like I'm not ready to share, and it's like you, you're just going to continually hold yourself back. And it's like it's about the journey. That's um, even one of the reasons why I had somebody say to me, they're like, why do you keep your, those old videos up on YouTube? They look terrible. Like, so it's how you can see the journey. Like, is somebody really going to judge me from something from like 2012? Okay, if they do. But, like, it is it's is about sharing your journey. Um, because we're always constantly improving. So be consistent. Um, because that's also if you're just consistently like posting as well, too, that's just how you get yourself out there. Um, and on that is always be learning, so find those opportunities. Um, whether it's like you're, maybe you're not doing you know um, paid uh, um, sponsorships or, or collaborations, um, but kind of like as Layla had mentioned, like take those opportunities to work with people in exchange for an experience or exchange for a product, because that's also how you find your voice as well too. So that when you do get those bigger paying um, collaborations. You're not like, oh shit, what am I going to do? Is this going to seem weird? <laughs> like, are people going to get this is an advertisement? You know? So it's like, as you start weaving it in, then you people that are following you aren't like, oh, this is paid, or whatever. Like, people are going to say weird things online. So, so always be learning um, and finding your voice in that. And then, um, oh, the last thing, which I know we touched on, is just be authentic. Um, the more authentic you are, just the more people respond um, and, and you start the, that dialogue. So be, and be authentic in your journey and know that, you know, and maybe you look back, like how you look back and you're like, I thought that was good. I mean, for sure, I'll look back and be like, what was I doing with that filter or whatever the case is. And it's like being authentic because it, it just, it inspires a new generation of people to create content. Um, and, you know, it, it, people get excited for it. So. What I would definitely say is, um, again, I'm a big believer in practice when it comes to photography. So set aside like whatever you can. If it's an hour each week, an hour each week, and go outside. Like photograph. You don't have to travel. Photograph your neighborhood. Photograph mm -hmm. sure. the next door neighborhood. Just walk around and see what speaks to you. Go back to your house. Whatever you can. And over time, you know, see like what your weaknesses are, what your strengths are, what you need to work on. Um, what maybe mistakes you're making that you can improve on. That's number one. Number two, if you have someone on Instagram, a travel photographer, wherever, in a magazine that you like, see if they have tutorials, because a bunch of them do. And like, I really like Ken Kamineski's work, for example. And I went on his website, and it's like, photography and editing tutorials. I'm like, yes, OK. His work speaks to me. What was his name? Ken Kamineski. K-A-M-I-N-E-S-K-Y. This was a few years ago, but you should still have them. Oh, um, so yeah, take our tutorials and see what it is they do, because they have been doing it for years probably and can teach a lot. And then third, I mean, we've all kind of said it, but yeah, be authentic and share yourself, because people want to connect to you and what you're going through. And 
people like knowing that you know you started out from not knowing what you're doing either, and then you got to a better point, and you're sharing your journey. So. And I think that's you, just to end. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I just, this is so crazy. So many fun doing this again. But I just learned that leave the camera running longer than you think it should, especially yeah. especially if you're doing an interview. There's so many times, like, oh, we have a great conversation. We turn the camera on, and we're like, so tell me about this, this, this. And we turn the camera off, and we're like, oh, we're back to normal. That's the stuff you want to capture. Or for me, I fall a lot. Like, if I fall again, I'm like, so I still <laughs>
uh, amplifies the audio exactly. for sure, and it separates it. It's, exactly. just, it's just so the easiest thing to do. I would make that like standard totally upgrading yeah. procedure because that way you have a phone with the yeah. audio. It's nothing's worse than yeah. you have a great interview. And everything is muffled like you're in the diner at Branson or Stage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or some clanking. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I use a blue ball yeah. for voiceovers as well. It's mm -hmm. like 60 bucks from Best Buy. Uh, it's called the blue ball. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. it absorbs yeah. like oh, yeah. Uh, and you can always, when all else fails, also do like tell the story through voiceover and use what clips of them you can so the whole thing isn't like muffled. Mm -hmm. So you'd be like, oh, my favorite part was when she was telling that, and then use a little sound bite or something. But you can use the voiceover afterward to continue telling the story yeah. on the tell. That's actually great. And then you just have to, it's, it's like that, yeah, you just basically kind of like narrate parts of it, like she told me blah, 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 and then like cut to like, and it's fine if there's clanking in this because it's like, you have to go space, and then she can. Make her like boom, her like little like, 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 joy or whatever you want to do in it. Um, so it's a good way to like keep it kind of. I do that a lot of times for my stuff as well too. I'll voice over to take people on the journey and then I'll have a moment where I say something that is marvelously stupid to the camera and then say, yay, that works. So, um, <laughs> where does the voiceover that I learned? Uh, the Wonder of Blanket. If you're in a room that echoes, like it's, it sounds ridiculous. I take my laptop into my bedroom, plug in my blue mic, and throw my blanket over myself, and then it sounds flat. It sounds like you're in a recording studio. So, I do that too. Yeah. yeah. Garages are, are great too. I, yeah. I do that with a lot. Even when I was like a news reporter on the go, and we would have to like write and voice stuff out in the field because when stuff happens, yeah, 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 yeah. we would go anywhere. We'd go to like, you know, Shell Gas Station bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> like, something I've done that. Shell Gas Station bathroom, close the door, and like literally have like the lead story was voiced in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> like, you've got to do what you got to do, you know, when you're up here covering it. So you can make anything work. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. Oh, you were talking about older. I'm Pat. I'm the voice of the older woman travelers. Okay. And I want to know what filter I can use to look younger. <laughs> No longer long enough. <laughs> <laughs> we need the shot for further away. Here is your body. You sound. But um, generally, the brighter, the lighter. Yes. Yes. But you know, I didn't mean to have a Yeah. I do a lot of, of fading. Um, yeah. But people will relate to, to that authenticity as well. Yeah. Because other people will watch it and go, oh, she looks like me, she sounds like me, she's in my age group. You know what I mean? I know, that's what they tell me, but I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> what about those cases, those iPhone cases that light up? Are they supposed to add like a soft light? Like they're like the ring I lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They're, they're the cases that you just kind of like at night, you press it and this gives you that natural light. I'm wondering what she's talking about. Would that work or something like that? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. yeah because that's the whole point is that, is that you really want to just have even soft light. So any sort, I also have a ring light. I have a lot of random equipment, but I also have a ring light um, just in case we happen to be in, in an environment where maybe we just need to offset like the background or whatever the case is. Um, but that's a really great way to kind of get that even light. And they're making now even smaller ones that you can get. You have a case on your phone, but you can have ones that kind of go around your camera. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there are a lot of affordable ways to do that, and just kind of be playing with that. Honestly, natural, soft light, I mean, it's crazy how, I mean, I look like a flower. I'm buying it. Like when you heard yourself, like um, maybe you have to 
like the first time you like left a recording on your phone and then you heard your voice and you're like, oh, that's what I sound like. <laughs> Same thing comes to like you seeing yourself on camera. Mm -hmm. And it's very much, you just have to keep practice to, to the point that you understand that you, this is like a, a tool, so you're not judging. And then you can also pick up, oh, you have a certain like tick that you do yeah. or whatever the case is. <laughs> so that you really just, you're not there nitpicking yourself in a like a self-conscious way, but you're looking at yourself as a tool of how am I using myself to get the message across? And then that kind of, you just have to keep looking at yourself. And it, it takes time. I've yeah. seen a lot of horrible it, video of myself. It is always yeah. weird to see yourself, because like I, I've done acting as well, and, and that first time you see yourself in something, you're like, oh. <laughs> um, like everything, the angles are wrong, and that's not what it looked like, but I think, what Sarah said is really important about not letting those like obviously you want to look your best, but I think it's also important to focus on <coughs> coming across, you know, clear audio, enthusiastic, energetic, and like don't let the small appearance issues um, take away from that. And that kind of comes with like the little planning thing. I think that's why so often I now kind of veer towards not planning too much because if I'm going in like and I'm supposed to be Wow, this is a cool room. That comes across as so fake as it looks to me. Like I put a camera in front of my face yeah. and let me just see what I say. And then it's like next thing I come in, I'm like, whoa, this is so. And it, it's now I have a completely different reaction. And it's people are not people are just tapping into that authenticity where it comes from like the gut. You know, sure, do you want things to be pretty? Yeah, but it's like at the same time. Like we're all human, and that's what we're connecting on in like, human level. So, and two things: if you figure out your style, not everybody has to be on camera. You just you've seen the montage videos, and I think it's better because we want to relate to a human. Mm -hmm. But if you're truly just not comfortable with that, I don't feel like that's something that you have to do to figure out whatever your voice is. And weird little tip for talking on camera: um, imagine somebody's asking you where you're from, or something basic like what's your age. Because you're not going to say, I'm from Michigan. Like, I'm going to say, I'm from Michigan. And that helps bring my voice down. I still do this to this day before I turn the camera on. Because otherwise, I find myself starting up here and then I slowly kind of get down my own. And then I'm down here. So, my first few videos, which are still up as well, are um, in the Raptors talking, and I don't know why. So, <laughs> have somebody ask you a question or just like get. I do, before I do my voiceover, I'll do a whole conversation before I hit record so that I'm already speaking when I go into it.